Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace. This is our first episode of our newest series, Weather. I know that doesn't sound like the sexiest topic sounding, but it's great. It's really good. We started Googling it and we could not believe how much cool stuff there is. We're talking about dangerous weather events, how humans can affect the weather, how weather has shaped human history, ancient and future weather, all sorts of stuff. But first, how dangerous is the weather, really? So from 2006 to 2010, about 2,000 US residents died each year from weather-related causes. 31% of those are deaths attributed to exposure, to excessive natural heat, heat stroke, sunstroke, or a combination of some of those. Those are all terrible things that can happen to you. Your body overheats and you end up dying. It's actually considered a public health issue because it can exacerbate pre-existing chronic conditions like cardiovascular, cerebral, and respiratory diseases. Things that you already have can be made worse just by getting it a little bit hotter. It doesn't just make you want to take off all your clothes. You can actually die. Close to 63% of these heat-related deaths were attributed to exposure of excessive cold, hypothermia, or both. So not just heat, but cold can also kill you. Humans evolved in a pretty warm part of the planet. You can learn more about that in our human series. Make sure you check that out. But now we live all over the place, and as the weather shifts, things are gonna get crazy. The remaining 6% of those deaths, by the way, were attributed to like floods, storms, lightnings, things that you're seeing on the news. So we're talking about stuff that you're not seeing on the news, and it's the weather, and it can kill you. There have been five mass extinctions in the history of our planet. I know this doesn't sound like it's gonna be the weather, Trust me, it is. More than 99% of all species that have ever lived on Earth are now dead, extinct, gone. 95% of those either died out because they couldn't compete successfully for food or other resources, or they failed to adapt as things changed around them, their local climate or weather. So weather and climate has basically killed billions of things over the course of the history of our planet. So let's break those down, shall we? Working from the beginning of time that we understand until now, so 440 million years ago, the first, or the oldest really, was the end Ordovician mass extinction. This was 440 million years ago, and an estimated 82 to 88% of all species were wiped out in that event. That's a lot. Of course, at the time, most of these were in the water, a lot of them. Uh, a lot of microorganisms, a lot of smaller plants and things. I mean, it, it, this was a long time ago. The world, what happened is the world entered this kind of intense ice age. And when that happened, the ice sheets dropped sea levels dramatically because as they form, they're sucking up all this water to make ice. And this global cooling killed off a lot of the warm adapted species. So without the climate remaining the same, things died. Get ready, because you're going to sense a pattern here. <laughs> Over about a million years, glacial conditions ended, and then rapidly sea levels rose again, and that means water that was low in oxygen was flooding into the ocean and killing a lot more species. It's bad. Then, like 100 million years later, the late Devonian mass extinction happened. This was 375 to 359 million years ago. This killed 79 to 87% of all the species that had lived or become living even more, like evolved in between those two extinctions. And this is, again, a theme that you're going to see. A lot of things are dying. This is a major environmental change during the Devonian mass extinction. They think, again, it had to do with a lack of oxygen in the ocean combined with rising sea levels and maybe global cooling. I don't know if all that sounds familiar, but it should. So all these photosynthesizing plants, plants that were getting stuff from the sun, and well, they couldn't do their jobs as well, and they ended up dying. Volcanic eruptions may have also caused some climate change, and it may have also been large meteor impacts, which we couldn't really know at this point. We haven't found any large meteor impact craters that line up with this timing, but this is a long time ago, so we're working with some hypotheses here. The end Permian mass extinction was about 252 million years ago. They called this the Great Dying. Already sounds bad, also a cool band name. 93 to 97% of all species died at that point, which means we, again, are all descendants of those maybe 4% of animals that were left after this extinction. That includes 82% of every genus, all genera. That's crazy, that's so much. 
Essentially what happened here is there was a volcanic eruption and it was one of the largest ever and over the course of 600,000 years this volcano erupted throwing basalt lava all across Siberia covering an area seven times the size of France. This volcano released so much gas into the atmosphere that over the short term Sulfur dioxide caused acid rain, which caused global cooling. And then over the long term, that CO2 greenhouse gas effect that we're sort of experiencing now warmed up the oceans. So we got cold and then warm again, and that caused a lot of death. I mean, I feel like this could have been on the news like next week. It's crazy how much this sounds like stuff we're experiencing now. The end Triassic mass extinction was around 201 million years ago. Don't think this is the dinosaur one, That's we're not there yet. This happened really fast. In as little as 10,000 years, 76 to 84 percent of all species on Earth were eliminated again. Man, can't catch a break. This uh, is when most mammal-like reptiles and large amphibians disappeared, and many dinosaur groups, but not all the dinosaurs, yet. The problem with this one is we don't actually understand all of the extinctions particularly well, and this is the one we understand the least. We think that it was probably falling sea levels and then shallow seas, which created a, a problem in the oceans, which caused a lot of die-off, because the oceans are kind of the lifeblood of our planet. They are pretty big. Then when water levels rose again, it was very low in oxygen, and on top of that, volcanic eruptions may have changed the overall climate. The end Cretaceous mass extinction, this is probably the most famous one, the one that most of you have heard of. This happened 66 million years ago, 65 million years ago. This is 81% at the top end of all species died. A lot of, lot of species, including bye bye dinosaurs. Famously, this one is associated with a pretty large asteroid impact. You, again, probably have heard of this because we have some evidence of this. We can find a giant crater on our planet that may have caused this extinction. Of course, it's still up for debate because we weren't there, we don't know everything about it. It was a long time ago after all, but we're pretty sure. What happened then is the geography of the Earth was changed dramatically, sea levels dropped uh, 150 meters in less than a million years, which is just a blink of an eye in geologic time. There was volcanic activity, toxic gases, the Earth's atmosphere was messed up and everything got really cold and the volcanic eruptions decreased uh, temperatures and then dumped CO2, which increased temperatures, causing another greenhouse effect and a 10 degrees Celsius increase. Now, 10 degrees Celsius doesn't sound like a lot, but right now we're talking about climate change having a two degree increase, and that's a big deal. So right now, according to a new study in Science Advances, we may be losing a species at 100 times greater rates than we should be. If that doesn't sound like an extinction, I don't know what is. So scientists are saying this is the sixth great extinction. We're at the very beginning of it. Remember, these things happen over thousands of years. And in the last 500, we've lost at least 340 almost documented species in the vertebrate community. This is all human cost, so way to go us. That's not including, by the way, that, that 340 number is not including bacteria. That's not including insects lost. That's not including plant life lost. That's not including invertebrates in any way. An untold number of species are going to disappear, and this is before we even discover them, before we observe them. We're learning about new species all the time still, and there are probably ones we'll never know about because we've helped them go extinct by changing the Earth's climate on our own. As the Earth enters this sixth mass extinction, as some scientists have claimed, we'll have to prove somehow that current extinction rates are above what was a background rate or a prevailing rate of extinction, which is fairly normal on the planet Earth. So according to an interview with Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Elizabeth Colbert, island populations are very vulnerable to extinction because of their isolation. They don't have anywhere else to go. There are few, if any, extinctions, she says, that we humans know about in the last 100 years that would not have taken place without human activity. It's pretty heavy. Honestly, whether or not humans survive isn't all that important. The question is, without all of these animals, if we lost 90% of all the animals and plants, bacteria, everything on the planet, would we really want to be here afterward? 
So what crazy weather events have you experienced? You can tell me about them down in the comments. And if you wanna know how it is that humans are affecting the weather and the climate around us, make sure you come back tomorrow to find that one out. So you should subscribe to Test Tube Plus because that's one way to find out tomorrow. You can also check out last week's episodes on dreams if you can't wait that long. It was a really cool series. I learned a lot, hopefully you will too. And make sure you come follow me on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez. That way if you have any questions, you can just shoot me a message. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Wow. <laughs>